This morning's reading is Luke 21, verses 23 to 36. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. There will be great distress in the land and wrath against this people. They will fall by the sword and will be taken as prisoners to all the nations. Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. There will be signs in the sun, moon and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. Men will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. He told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. I tell you the truth. This generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with dissipation, drunkenness and the anxieties of life. And that day will close on you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Just uh, pray for Paul and for ourselves. Father, we really thank you for Paul and his willingness to come and serve us here this morning, Lord, and to serve you. We pray, Lord, that as he speaks your word this morning, our hearts would be open to hear what you want to say to each one of us. Pray that you bless him, Lord, as he gives your word. Amen. Thank you, Helen. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Be awake, be alert, be on your guard. Something is going to happen. That's the message of today, Advent Sunday. A couple of weeks ago, I had to go into London for a meeting of archdeacons. Oh, it's a tough business, my job. Um, and I was early, so I went for a stroll around Regent Street and Oxford Street. The shops were, and restaurants were bustling. Music was blaring out. So here it is, Merry Christmas. There were Father Christmases, Christmas lights, and so forth. It was quite magical. Now, some people complain that Christmas celebrations begin too early. I can't say I, that I'm one of those. I'm not, at least usually, a latter-day Victor Meldrew or Killjoy. I love Christmas and all that goes with it, and I love the build-up to it. However, I am aware that amidst all the lights, the fun, and preparations for the 25th, there is the danger that we overlook this season of Advent. And if we do overlook it, then I'm sorry about that. So what, you may say, what has Advent got to say to us? Well, let me ask you to examine with me what is Advent. Put quite simply, traditionally, Advent is about preparing for Christmas, notably with special calendars, as Helen mentioned earlier, which is getting ever more exotic, opening each day, marking the countdown to the big day. But in church, Advent is about preparing for Christ's return and the day of judgment. Now, those two concepts, Christ's second coming and the day of judgment, are not exactly the sexiest of themes the world is longing to hear. Indeed, they are very uncomfortable thoughts. 
but they are nonetheless part of the gospel. The passage set for this morning tells of Jesus warning his disciples to be alert to the coming of the Son of Man. And of course, thoughts of Christ's second coming are at the very heart of the Eucharist. Indeed, in this very service, we will all soon be saying, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And all through the New Testament, Christians are looking forward to Jesus returning, looking forward with excitement, but trepidation as well. The very end of the book of Revelation, the last book, has the ascended Christ speaking to John and saying, he who gives this testimony speaks, yes, I am coming soon. And the seer, John speaking for the church, says, amen, come Lord Jesus. The last words of the New Testament are a prayer for the speedy returning of Christ. Now, it's quite clear the first disciples expected Jesus to return during their own lifetime. For example, Paul, in his letter to the Thessalonians, even goes so far as to tell the Thessalonians how to prepare for Christ's return. Don't sleep, keep awake, remain sober, put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. It's uncertain when Jesus thought he might return, but the early Christians wanted him back. And the more you want something, the more you hope it will happen quickly. However, as the years passed, Christ didn't appear. Some began to murmur and question. Thus, the second letter of Peter, the, in the second letter of Peter, the writer is facing the question, when now is the promise of his coming? And he answers the question by saying, with the Lord, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years a day. In other words, what seems to be long to us is hardly long to God. As the years have passed and lengthened into centuries, the church has had to learn to wait, to watch, to pray, and to work, to bring about the hope that our Lord's return will establish God's kingdom on earth. The church has done this by devoting one whole season of the year to the consideration of this hope, this Advent season. And in this season, as we prepare to celebrate the Saviour's first coming at Christmas, we are called to all think also of his second coming at the great day. Now, there is always a temptation when you believe in the second coming to try and theorize as to when this may be. So there are many people who come up with dates and times. Indeed, hardly a year goes by without somebody saying, it's now. But so far, no sign. Whilst we may be rightly be scornful of those who try to estimate times, largely by a total use and abuse of scripture, we must hold fast to our Advent hope, firmly and strongly. We do believe Christ will come again to be our judge, even though we don't know when or how he will come. There are two ways I think we can look at our Lord's coming. Firstly, through development. In other words, one sees the Christian gospel spreading throughout the world, and then Christ comes as the last link in the chain. A lot of biblical evidence supports that view. Secondly, one sees Christ coming in a sudden and dramatic way, breaking into our imperfect way of life. When this happens, happy the faithful, but hard luck the unfaithful. Whichever way you look at it, I would want to say that I believe Christ has been coming all through history. History is not just the story of the evolution of humankind, History is the story of God as well. God coming to his children. He came in the prophets. He came in the incarnation. He came in all the great happenings of history. He came and he comes in the teachers and lawgivers of all races. And he comes today in the church, which is the body of Christ. The story, though, is not finished. God has not fully come. 
He came once fully when he gave the full and complete revelation of himself in our Lord Jesus Christ. But not yet fully in the sense that there are vast numbers of the human race to whom the gospel of Christ has not yet been presented. What we have to understand is that all that is happening in the world today is a continuation of what we read in the Bible and in our histories. Abraham leaving his home at the call of God. Moses giving the people the law of God. Isaiah teaching the people of his day the majesty and holiness of God. Our Lord lying as a little child in the manger and as a person dying on the cross. St. Paul preaching the gospel in Athens and Ephesus. St. Augustine bringing the gospel to these shores. These are all the same story with the same outcome. And we continue that story, striving to bring about the advent, the coming of God. As I'm sure you well know, in this diocese we work under the banner of living God's love. Here at Christ Church Bushmead, I hope you will go on going deeper into God. Go on making new disciples. Go on transforming your community. By your prayer, your worship, and your consistent Christian life, I hope that together you may help to bring that advent of God, our Lord, a little bit closer. That day where you must await with awe and godly fear, but also with faith and hope. Bear it in mind when you approach the altar of God that here we are continuing a perpetual memory of his precious death until his coming again. To you all in this congregation, may I wish you a Merry Christmas, but have a good Advent first. (laughs) Amen.